Welcome back to Turning Pages. Today we're joined by Carolyn Ford, a literary agent. So it's a, it's a pleasant change of pace. Uh, no more authors to talk to today, so we're going to talk to a literary agent. Now, what exactly does a literary agent do? So a literary agent is in partnership with an author, um, forwarding the interests of their career in all aspects, basically. Yeah. So let's say I'm a brand new squeaky author. Yeah. I've just hammered out my 220,000 word <laughs> manuscript mm -hmm. and, and I've sent it off into the, well, I, I don't know what to do. What, what do I do with that 220,000 word manuscript? Well, first off, you cut it in half. <laughs> But other than that, I would say um, you do your research. That's the thing I always emphasize to new and upcoming writers is just take the time to go into your local bookstore, pick up a book in the area that you would like your book to be seen in, in the bookstore and see who publishes it. And then open that book and look at the acknowledgments and see who are the agents and publishers that do it. And therefore, those are the ones you should probably be targeting. And so it narrows down the list, because if you Google it, you will see a thou thousands of agents who are looking for submissions, but they're not necessarily appropriate for you. So it's always so important to do your research and figure out yeah. where your book falls in the marketplace? Yeah, and it's never been easier to do that research. Like for many years, it was quite opaque. What do I do? And you know, you mail out things, but now you can get online and you can very easily see, but you do need to do a bit of detective work for yourself. Yeah, yeah. So, so I've got the novel. It's. Uh, it's down to 110,000 words. Yeah. I know that it's a psychological thriller. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm ready to, to get it into the world. Realistically, let's say I don't want to go to the trouble of finding an agent. Realistically, mm -hmm. what are the odds of a first-time author with nothing else published having their manuscript looked at by a traditional publisher? Well, I think the problem is that many, pub many traditional publishers don't um, accept manuscripts that are not represented by an agent because they view an agent as a filter for them and because they we receive a lot of submissions and they also receive a lot of submissions and so without that kind of passing that gate and without me who has the relationships with or any agent who has the relationships with publishers it, it's very hard to jump the top of the pile and be read and so when I know when I know an, an, an editor and I know their tastes I can say to them with honesty this is something I really believe that you will read, and or you will like, and therefore they will read it. So, they'll they'll read yeah. it above what's yeah, on top so of their slush Without that pile. advocate for you, you really are swimming in a sea of a million manuscripts, yeah. literally. Yeah. So what do you specialize in? So I actually, I would say in my agency, I am the one who is um, kind of has more diverse and commercial tastes. Well, it's not deliberate, it's just what I like, I like. And I happen to have Clifford Jackman, who is, he wrote a noir western. And then I have Ian Hamilton, who writes crime fiction. And I have Christy Cherish, who writes urban fantasy. But then I also represent Padma Viswanathan, who was shortlisted for the Giller last year. And yeah. so, like, I have a, a broad and wide ranging. And, and what is your agency? Just uh, so, so it's Westwick Creative Artists, which is the oldest and largest literary agency in Canada. And we represent over 400 authors. Um, we have seven agents and 13 employees. So. And you're located in Toronto? In Toronto, yeah. yeah. That's right. Now, uh, so you've, uh, you've read my manuscript yeah. and you've enjoyed it. Yeah. And what happens then if you, if you feel that it's something that's marketable that you can, you can take to market? What, what's the next step that an author could realistically expect? So At realistically, if an agent has read your work and really likes it, they'll probably give you a call. You'll get the call yeah. that says, I love your book, and then you'll freak out. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Um, you could realistically have a few agents offer you representation, in which case you will weigh your best fit. And so I think it's whoever has the best input on your manuscript, whoever you feel most comfortable with. and. Um, yeah, so I mean, when I love a manuscript, I call the author immediately and I say, I offer representation and then it's their decision whether or not I go forward with them, and or they go forward with me, and then I will, if they do, then we go forward with editing the manuscript and then submitting to publishers. So you go through a, a level of editing with the author yeah, it's, before moving it to that next step onto the, uh, onto the to, rep, to editors at different publishing houses, I would imagine? Yeah, I would say it's not quite an edit, but it's more just feedback. It's like a, an informed, intelligent reader yeah. giving you feedback about what's not quite working or what is working or if there's some flaw in the plot or something like that. So. And how do most authors respond to that? Oh, very positively. Yeah. Most authors really, really, really want someone to read their work and focus on it and give them feedback on it. Yeah, so. I, w I would say at the point mm -hmm. where an author is uh, 
about to get representation from an agent, yeah. they're at that uh, that part in their writing where they know creative uh, and and uh, constructive criticism when they hear it and are willing to listen. Yeah, ideally. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah you would hope so. I think that they're hungry for it in many cases, so they just want that extra feedback, and they've been living with it in their own mind and heart for a long time. And to have an external person who has some like professional like experience yeah. and give them something back really is rewarding. And, and how does somebody become a literary agent? It's, it's not when you're a little girl and, uh, and you're thinking, I want to be a fire, firefighter, I want to be an astronaut. No. Was it, I want to be a literary agent? No. Um, so I knew I wanted to work in book publishing and I had, I, I joined the game kind of late. Like I did some uh, other jobs before that. I worked in sales and marketing and I also did some uh, English. Publishing, sales and marketing? No, no non-related to yeah. publishing. And um, also um, I did an ESL teaching abroad um, for many years, but I knew that I wanted to work in publishing when I came back to Canada. And so when I did, um, I realized that's a good marriage, uh, the editorial love and the sales and marketing. So, because that's what we do is we're salesmen. Yeah, and so, and so how, how did it come about? Oh, so for me, um, I was lucky enough to get hired by Westwood um, at the front desk, which is where everyone who becomes an agent at Westwood starts. Yeah. And so, um, and because we view it more as like it's an apprenticeship and you can't really, you could take an agenting course and there are many good ones, but you're not really outfitted with the expertise and the knowledge of how to handle it just from a course. So you really need to do, to work with a established agent before you can understand. So it's a true apprenticeship. It is. Yeah. That's how I view it. Yeah, so, you learn yeah. at somebody's yeah. elbow. So I've been there for 10 years now, but I've been an agent on my own for about three. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, that's wonderful. I'm yeah. so glad to have you come in today. Well, it's a pleasure. And, uh, it's so fun. And it's good to see you. Very now, that's a very interesting ring you're wearing. How about you tell us a little you. bit about your ring? Oh, it's just a ring I bought for myself. Is there any kind of backstory to it? The only backstory I would say is that my husband really doesn't like it, but every time I wear it, someone comments on it. Well, it's an awesome ring. Thank you so much, Regardless what your husband yeah. thinks. I know, I agree. Well, thank, <laughs> thank you so much for okay. joining us today. Okay. Bye. And we'll be back with more Turning Pages after this.